Mr. Joseph Fadi, so I think we'll, we'll we'll get started with the meeting. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty, justice, for all. Thank you. Uh, so I see Harlan indicated he might not be here. I don't see him, so we will need to seat somebody for Harlan, somebody for Kim. So, so we have two, and then uh, hopefully Tim will show up. I'll make a motion that we seat Prem and uh, Peter for two of the missing members. I'll second it. Any all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, approval. Hey, Joe, you might want to have specified who is for Tim in case he shows up. There is nobody that can, nobody is for Tim. Oh, okay. Sorry. I don't have another alternate. We can see, you know, Prem for Harlan, and uh, we can see Peter for Robin. Tim shows up to join. Right. And I got an email from Tim saying that. I just got an email from Tim saying he's trying to get in, but he can't. So. Okay. All right. Trying to get in. What is the ID to log in? I got it too. I'll send him an email right now. Okay. He just arrived. Okay. Tim is in. Okay, so we're up to approval of the minutes. I guess take them one at a time. So March 31st minutes. I make a motion we uh, approve as submitted. I second it. Mark, any, any, uh, any discussions? All right. Can you guys just say your names when you're going to speak? That was Wayne made the motion. Mark Adelbert seconded. Thank you. Uh, all in favor or anyone opposed? Look that way. In favor, I. Oh, sorry. All right. Anyone opposed? So March 31 minutes are approved. Next set of minutes is June 3rd. I look, these all look, they look good, so I'll make a motion. This is Dave. I'll make a motion that we approve the June 3rd minutes. I'll second it, Wayne. Any discussion? <laughs> All. Anyone opposed to approving the minutes? Hearing none, that passes. Next set of minutes is June 11th, 2020. I propose we approve. I'll second it. Wayne. Any discussion? Hey, who made the original motion? Uh, Tim, sorry. Thank you. All right. Uh, no discussion. If uh, anyone opposed to approving these minutes? Okay. None. So motion passes. Next is public communications. The first item uh, was the tax collector's June 30 report. So this basically was a cumulative report for the collections for June. So 
So again, that's just uh, for everyone's information as far as uh, what the collections are. If there's something we'll talk about a little bit more, there'll be a lot more um, monitoring of this. So although we pass this out monthly, it's a little bit more critical going forward that we that we monitor where the collections are are against at least a prior year or the past couple of years. So I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in, a, in, in an upcoming part of the agenda. Okay, the other communication that I have uh, is from the regional school district regarding teacher negotiations. So under state statutes, the Board of Finance at, can appoint a person, a representative person to be pre present as an observer only during negotiations. So if anyone's interested in, in, in being uh, the representative, you could just email me and uh, again, it's not required that we appoint somebody, but again, it's just an observer position. But if anyone's interested, interested in that, please let me know. Okay, finance director's report. So we have the reports. Uh, June 30 is a little bit different than uh, month to month because uh, June 30 is our fiscal year end. So we are not closed yet as far as uh, the fiscal year. So whatever we're looking at may or may not change. Revenues are a little bit more probably uh, less likely to be adjusted, but but could uh, expenditures, there's still invoices coming in and closing entries aren't done. So I wanted to provide it to, to give everyone can look at some of the things that are there. Obviously the items that are overspent are, are probably not gonna go away. So normally transfers probably in September, October. So there will be another June 30 report that we will get to review that will then, uh, once, once we're closed, and then the transfers can be calculated as far as what we need to transfer. There, there's going to be a combination under the charter rules of the ones that are over lines overexpended by a thousand, and then departments that are overspended will have to uh, will have to do those transfers. But until we're closed, it doesn't uh, make any sense to do those calculations. Uh, and then we may want to look at. Um, Potentially, there, there are certain things that weren't done in the budget. So it's, I think in September, when everything is closed, we'll also have a discussion of if there's some appropriations that we might want to carry forward, not knowing again what 2021, you know, what that's going to bring uh, more on the revenue side. But uh, and just an example of that is if you look at uh, the assessor's budget, there's $5,000 of personal property audits that was those weren't done probably because of the timing it would have been done in the spring. Uh, that's something we may want to carry to next year to, to give us some budget flexibility. So we'll we'll come up with a, a list of those and, and, and talk about that at the meeting just to, just to put us in the best position that we can. So just, just as a point of um, just trying to get a little perspective, I, I, I asked the tax collector to tell me what, what the town collected last year through July 17th and what they what she collected this year through July 17th and and the good news is that it's up 439,000 and again I didn't count the days but it is up 439,000 as compared to last year so collections are higher this year and talking to most of my clients uh because I'm out bouncing around and asking them about these things and uh that that is consistent with what most tax collectors are seeing. They're actually seeing that they're ahead of last year for July payment. So, which is a little bit interesting why, why that would occur. Um, you know, because of the escrow issue and, and, and a lot of the mortgages are escrowed, um, the, the real concern is gonna be January. So again, if, at, at some point we're gonna, for the next meeting, we'll start kind of tracking month to month what collections were against prior year to kind of identify any negative trends. And, and so we can be a little bit more proactive than, than reactive if, if we things, see things going in the wrong direction. But January, the January installment is gonna be, that's gonna be very telling as far as where we are uh, 
uh, what those collections look like as compared to the prior year. So that's all, all I had on to really talk about regarding the finances again, because of the close, we want to wait to have a really detailed discussion about where, where we, where the year ends up. Uh, the other reports should, if you have any questions on those, I, they were provided, but again, there, there could be some closing entries, especially uh, related to the road fund, anything in the construction that, that the accounts pay will tend, tend to lag a little bit as far as getting those invoices in there paid. So I don't know if anyone has any questions or comments on, on any any of that at this point. Again, we will revisit it in detail, most likely at the September meeting. I guess, Joe, in big picture, it's Tim. Um, you're feeling good about where we're at in terms of the monies that have been taken in relative to where we would have been a year ago and the expenses that we had planned for? Well, I just looked at the revenue side. So you had to be up to 400,000 is good, but again, my concern is what happens in January. Yeah. I don't know. So I'm not sure people are just paying because they have the money and they want to pay it because they got to register their car. I mean, there's other things in play here that might drive people to make sure they get their taxes paid, uh, non the non-real estate. So I, you know, the year, the, we should end the year, last year, the numbers look okay. Uh, but again, it will give us an opportunity to take some pressure off the 2021 budget by, by looking at what we can potentially carry forward. So again, we're, we're in a position that we have some flexibility. So that's a, that's a good thing. Thank you. Yeah, Joe, just, a, this is Bob, just a couple of comments to, to add to a little bit to what you said. I talked to Kristen about the collections early last week. I can't be sure it was exactly the 17th or when, but what she said she's seeing is more people are paying the full year's taxes than usual. Again, I don't know how significant any of this is after less than 17 days of people having the bill. Uh, and at that point, not much of the escrow accounts were in, but that's not at all unusual. I'm not said it before, I'm not that worried about the escrow accounts. So the mortgage companies are going to make sure the taxes are paid because they don't want to lose the property. Right. It's the people who own their properties free and clear are the ones we have to watch. But so far, it's encouraging, but it's honestly too early to tell anything, really. Oh, that's good news. All right. Any other comments or we'll move on to selections report if you have anything besides tax collections that you want to update us on bob i can figure out how to get my mouse to where i unmute i'll be in good shape here uh no really the bulk of my comments were going to be on the, the tax collection to date uh joe i don't know if you're going to talk about it a little later so i may be stealing some fire but Joe and I are talking about trying to, to make the reports that the Board of Finance gets, the information, making it more into information versus just data. Uh, maybe with some sort of an overview that shows you these are the, how accounts are progressing against a three years average, a percentage spent or revenue collected. Uh, not talking about not providing any of the reports that you're getting now. We certainly will continue those may look at retitling some of them just to make them a little easier to tell which report you should be looking at when we're talking about them. Because I know for my first couple of years at the Board of Finance, it was kind of hard to track exactly which fund we were talking about. But more to follow on that. And that's all I've got, Joe. Okay, can I ask a question, Bob? This is Peter um, Baird. I, uh, it, my understanding is that whatever you were working on, I might have missed this in a meeting. I missed one early in June too. But whatever you were working on with renting HES is not going to happen now in the short term, at least, or for leasing in HES. Is that true? Yeah, this is Bob. That that's true. The school that was interested in once the pandemic hit decided, and I certainly yeah, I understand. To, yeah. to put their yeah. okay. expansion plans on hold. Now, I don't. I never have gotten the feeling that means. They will not come back to us when and if this clears up and we have a better picture of our future because the needs they fill for school districts are still going to be there. Uh, 
So I haven't written it off, but yeah, for now it's on suspense. Okay. I guess in the spirit of general comments, um, I would say thank you to Prem for making the farmer's market really happen this year. I was really impressed given all of the um, challenges with rain and COVID that it actually works. And frankly, I think there are more vendors than ever. So in the spirit of Vitaly and Haddam and businesses opening and things working given the circumstances we're in, well done. Hi, uh, it's Prem. Thank you very, uh, very much, Tim. Um, we wouldn't be as successful without our, you know, market master, Christy Benson. She's been so integral in putting this together and like or in organization and structure and most importantly, safety. Um, and I got to applaud the uh, Adam Hignum and, you know, visitor attendance because everybody was wearing masks that I saw and was, you know, being safe uh, to the community uh, at large. So I, I'm really appreciative of that. Just keep that ice cream truck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> it got me last time too, Tim. All right, under new business, we need to officially appoint the auditors required in order to report it to the state. So we have the engagement letter from Bloom Shapiro who's done our audits in the, in the past. So we just need to, a motion to officially appoint the auditors for the fiscal year 20 audit. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Wayne. Tim. <laughs> Got it. All right. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Or all I'm opposed? Anyone all right. opposed? Sorry. All right. No, no opposed. Motion passes. Okay. Approval of suspense, suspense transfers. So I will, I will give a, a little background in, into what 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 that is uh, before we actually go to approve them because Board of Finance. Uh, has to approve the transfers. So suspense transfers are are basically uh, accounts and they're only motor vehicle, motor vehicle supplement and personal property that have been un uncollected and the industry standard is for three years. So if the task collector hasn't been able to track them down or there's a bankruptcy or they're no longer in the state, whatever the reason is after three years of trying to collect, normally they're transferred to suspense. And that, that doesn't mean that we don't try to collect them going forward. If they move back to town or uh, something else happens, the, the, the tax system we use will flag them as, as delinquent. But if they take the car and they drive it to California, then we have pretty much zero chance of, of getting that. So, so the tax collector goes through the list and after she's exhausted all her efforts, then she submits the list to us to, uh, transfer to suspense. So again, the norm in, in the tax collection world is three years of those. Real estate is leaned. That is not transferred to suspense unless there's a really unusual circumstance because the prop the property secures the taxes. Um, so this is this whole process is is defined by state statutes and, and so since it's kind of the impact is an accounts received removal write off, maybe not permanently, but at least initially that the governing body, financial governing body has to approve those. So the lists that uh, that Kristen sent it, for, there's 15 personal property accounts totaling 6,550 and 72 cents. There are 99 motor vehicle accounts that totaled 16,129 and 19 cents. And there were 22 motor vehicle supplement accounts that totaled $2,817.87. And she has a memo on the front that lists those numbers, and then the reports for the specific taxpayers are uh, that she's recommending to be written off or are attached to her report. And Joe? So quick, quick question. This is Dave. The question uh, Do we send these out to a collection agency at some point? Yeah. 
I don't think we currently do that. It, there is certainly some towns that do that. Uh, these numbers aren't really huge numbers. So say most of the bigger cities who have a higher delinquency rate will do that. Of course, there's a fee to that, so that means you don't get all of it, but some of it's better than none of it. Um, so that's something that uh, certainly can can be looked at, but I don't think we've done that traditionally in, in, in the past that I'm aware of. Thank you. I guess to add to Dave's point, when you look at the CUM from 2004 or 2008, I can't remember what um, what the um, uh, database that you sent forward was, two, four, two, eight. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it may be worthwhile in the long run to do that because took 50% of the dollar and they made 150, we made 150. We're better off, right? That'd be 3% of the budget, maybe. Yeah, this that we control. This Twenty-three thousand dollars. So if that's our average, it, it's it's over over the fifteen years. It may be that high, but the longer it goes, the most more likely the car is going to even exist anymore. My my bad. It's just the numbers you guys came when you gave us the report. Yep. So it's the total is rough numbers about twenty-three thousand for this this year. So we, we can look at what the history has been, and we certainly can uh, uh, make the request to the tax collector if she's considered that, and if if not, why not, and, and ask her to, to kind of get back to us on that. So I can make a note to, when I send this back to her, I can ask her that question and, and, and report back to the board uh, next, next meeting. Thank you, Joe. This is Dave. I would make a motion to transfer to the suspense the items as listed in this note from our Haddam tax collector. Second, Tim. Any discussion? All right. Anyone opposed to making this transfer to suspense? All right. Hearing none, motion passes. Next up is public comment. I did I did check the email and for public comment and the public comment the only email we received was that somebody wanted to transfer us ten million dollars and, and we get forty percent and they get sixty percent. Everybody's a comic. So, it's a, it's a public comment. And then that brings us to the end oh. of the agenda. Again, I know unless something specifically comes up, uh, I, I don't anticipate scheduling an August meeting. But if there's something we need to approve, then then I would I would do that. Otherwise, we would plan on September and hopefully have some some 